All right, today we're going to be looking at comparator timers, and what a comparator timer uh, is great for is a a small timer that you'll want to extend a pulse for. So in this instance, I've got a four-way rail, and it all leads to uh, this centre bit. So on my way up here, I want these torches to change this rail um, on my way when I'm around about here, so it's not doing it before or after, and I'm missing missing these change. So I use a comparator timer, uh, I use these because it's only a short pulse we need to extend and you can extend them uh, quite a lot. So this one is about 8 seconds, just under 7.2, 7.2 seconds this one will uh, extend for rather than the one pulse. So we'll have to power this on, that'll keep uh, the pulse lit for 7.2 seconds roughly and then it'll power itself off. So how a comparator works is First off, you need to know the output of your power source. So your button, it does 16, as you can see. This one turns the torch off. This one's 17, and it doesn't. So that's 16 bits we're going to put into, into the cycle. When we cycle this, it'll go 16. So this is 16. 16 blocks, it'll travel. 16 bits, it'll get up here. And the comparator will also output it. So the comparator will take it in and say, this is 16. 16 16 16 you're still 16 and then when it moves over to this block it will drop by one so we've got 16 in and we have to go there and back so we have to divide it by two so that'll give us eight cycles so it'll go around eight times and when it does that it'll do it at the time or speed of a tenth of a second because that's how long it takes for a comparator to pass it through so that's how long the comparator holds it for so that's one tenth two tenth three tenth four temp so on here you get eight temps so for any four you get 7.2 out and the reason why I use four rather than five which would be the full second and by the way it's a second because the button the pulse of a button lasts for one second so this pulse will last for one second and then if you put comparators on it'll hold it for a tenth an extra temp, an extra temp, an extra temp, an extra temp, which is half a second there, half a second back, and it will go around it eight times, so that will give us eight seconds. But the problem with using it so closely to a second is that sometimes it will give you a gap like that. As you can see, a little torch that's not lit is one temp per second. Sometimes it catches it, sometimes it doesn't, but you're left with a flickering torch. You can see a bit more clearly on this one. So if I power this one on, you can see that there's two temps of a second there, just floating around. And that's two temps because there's 12 here. And 12 times one temp is 1.2. Uh, so use four to be safe. And if you want to extend it, you just carry on putting your uh, comparators on the end of this. And the second lot, you can go all the way up to 32 comparators. So... Uh, just have a play with it and get used to it. The very, very useful things, as you can see, I built some super large ones. So all these will, will work. You press this button here and it'll power this. Then in turn, we'll come back down. Power this one before it goes out, hopefully. Let's miss one by a tenth. Then once that one's done, it'll let up and power this. This is this one lasts for a, a, a long time, uh, well over a minute. And you can do a lot more compact versions of this if you're wanting to do an extended length of time. But if you're just wanting it for 10 seconds, it's the quickest way to do it. We're just dropping uh, eight comparators uh, together. Um, I hope that helped. Um, I'll do other videos about comparators because they're super interesting. And this is just one use for them. Um, so thank you and uh, see you next time.